Hey everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. I apologize I haven't recorded for a few weeks. I was actually competing in a piano competition um, for the last two weeks, but I'm excited to be back and to get back doing these videos each week. I'll actually be doing a few this week just to make up for those weeks that I missed. Um, and I'd just like to thank everybody for their support. If anybody has questions, email me. I'd love to do a video with whatever question you might have. Uh, today's video is on sight reading, and it's dedicated to a girl I know named Morgan. And she wanted to know some of the techniques that can help us become stronger sight readers and to kind of alleviate some of the stress that goes into on-the-spot sight reading. So I hope this is uh, helpful, what I have to present. One of the greatest ways to practice sight reading is um, I like to start with hymns when my students are trying to uh, learn how to sight read better or even if I'm just trying to kind of sharpen up my sight reading skills I always like to do hymns because the four part harmony causes you to have to read each voice you know in a lot of Mozart sonatas one voice will be moving at a different pace so maybe you're more focused on the left hand, maybe you're more focused on the right hand because the left hand has patterns. Just depends. But in hymns, each voice is switching each time. Um, there are a few common tones, but we want to be able to read all four voices um, very quickly so that it can be a nice smooth line. So the first thing I would point out is that sight reading is a process. It is something that you have to practice to get good at. A lot of people think, oh, you're just born a good sight reader. Maybe some people have a little bit of natural talent with this, but I think it's something that you really obtain. And if you want to get really good at sight reading, you should uh, practice sight reading string quartets. I know that is really challenging for me, especially when you have to move that alto voice um, to fit the rest of the harmony because you're not reading in treble or bass clef, which we're normal. Uh, we're, which we're normally reading from, so uh, that is a, an advanced way. We're just going to start with the hymns here, and uh, this is just an old Christian hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, and I'm just going to start, I would start with right hand, even though you're saying, I want to get good at sight reading right now, you know, it's pointless to overwhelm yourself with all four voices at first if you don't even feel comfortable with two voices. Um, so we'll have the alto and the soprano voice in the right hand. And what I'm going to start doing, this is the biggest secret to uh, to sight reading that I think a lot of people don't focus on. A lot of people focus on notes. They focus like, okay, here's E flat, E flat, F E flat, G E flat. Rather than thinking unison, or you can just think E flat on that first one, and then just a second up, and then a third up. And then this is a third, a fourth, and a fifth. And then a fourth, third, third, and, and the stepping up, I'm stepping, stepping up a second in the soprano voice, and then I'm stepping, stepping up another second in the soprano voice and the alto voice. So we're reading each voice intervolically, so you're thinking in thirds, seconds, fifths, whatever it might be, rather than thinking notes, because have you ever had a, a situation where you've had ledger lines and you've had to you know count all the way up? and then it's kind of confusing. Well, those ledger lines are really easy if you think about it, because you can really see just uh, step to step, or if it's a skip, or if it's a fourth, fairly easily. And that's how you want to get used to sight reading just within the staff, especially because um, once you start reading intervolically, it makes things a million times easier. So let's try the left hand now. Um, so I'm just going to take that same technique. So I just did the first line. I would take small sections too to practice your sight reading because then you can measure your progress and if it's bad, you can go back. And you might say, well, that's not getting good at sight reading. Again, take it in small steps. Don't try and sight read a Beethoven concerto your first day. Um, really try to take it in small steps. So uh, now I'm going to go extra slow in my tempo because now I'm putting all four voices together. If I was a beginning student at sight reading, I would go as slow as it takes to really process. Okay, now that we're reading both voices or both hands, there's a trick that uh, one of my teachers at the university taught me. He said you should either be reading top to bottom or bottom to top. So each when you're sight reading, it's not like scattered all over the place. It's just down, 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 or 
up, 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 up. And I found, for me, that I like to go up because sometimes I get lazy with the left hand and I'll end up missing some notes, but my melody's there, so it covers it. If I'm reading that left hand first, my left hand's always gonna be there, and I'm gonna feel like a real idiot if I miss those right hand melody notes. So it forces me to be even more focused to read up. But that's a personal preference. So, again right here, I'm just reading, okay, a step up in both the soprano and the tenor voice. Once you get more comfortable in that tempo, then just take it in full tempo. Now I want to make a point here. Uh, if you have a really good ear, or even if you don't, uh, there's something that you can do to assist you in the sight reading. If you're sight reading something on the spot, if a singer changes their mind right before you go on for a collaborative uh, competition or whatever it might be, and they say, hey, I've switched pieces, I have to do this one, and you are panicking and you're saying, oh my gosh, what do I do? You can leave some notes out. You, if you're sight reading and it's, it's in a pressured situation, leave some of the notes out. So what I might do is this. I would think, okay, my strong beats are one and three. There's the, the beginning of the measure, the downbeat, and then the half measure. So I could do. See, I've left out quite a bit of notes there, um, but at the same time, it didn't sound bad because everything was within harmony. Also, if you're really struggling, if it's a really dense piece, let's say that this was really hard for us. Um, if you were really struggling with it and you were in one of those high pressure situations, what you'd want to do is you'd want to think harmonically. This is actually quite hard to do, but if you practice it, um, it will become really easy and it's actually a very easy thing. Um, so I can just, you can improvise something. beautiful thing. Maybe some people like that more. Uh, but I threw in some jazz harmonies there, which if you're doing a really pure sight reading, you wouldn't want to do that. But again, you can rely on a lot of different senses. You And, and your hand will develop where, where are those harmonies. You know, if this is E flat, your hand is automatically going to develop the feel of that and what sounds good with that E flat. You know, would this sound good with the E flat? Probably not, but this, or this. So I'm imp introducing a little bit of improv with sight reading just in case of those high pressured situations. But I would just recap in saying, read bottom to top or top to bottom and then read intervolically. I hope this video has been helpful today. If anyone has any further questions on sight reading, please email me. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com or feel free to email me another request and I'd be happy to help you out. And thanks for joining me today.